Yes. Okay. Now we're now we're recording. Go ahead. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So I am Robin Ray, and now I can't see anything because it's telling me. Okay. Hang on. I gotta do something to my screen now. Continue. Sorry, guys. Okay. That works. Um. So I'm Robin Ray and from Lily Lane Decor and Design. My daughter Georgia is helping me out today. And we are working on painting some end tables using country chic paint, um, which is a Canadian made line of paint, zero VOC, super easy to use, um, approved for use on children's furniture in Canada and children's furniture and toys in Canada. Um, it can be used on wood, metal, glass, fabric. Yeah, sure. Like wood toys for kids? Yep. Good. Yeah, summer fabric. Summer fabric toys. You might have to go catch the fabric. And with these sparky Sorry, walls. Sorry, this is this is real life. There's kids and dogs and rabbits and all kinds of things. Anyway. Here. So, anyways, we've been working on these two little end tables, um, and we talked about the prep that would be required to do these. So, just a very light sanding. Um, I did sand the finish fully off the tops because I want to leave the tops a raw wood. Um, or as close to as I can get. Um, and so we talked about that, about sanding them off. You'll see there's still a little bit of finish here that I haven't quite finished off to see what that looked like before. Um, and once we did this, we did our sanding and then a light sand anywhere else, just enough so that the paint can grab a hole. Uh, and then we wiped all the dust off of our furniture and we went ahead uh, using the color dune grass. We uh, started painting this table here. This table here has already had two coats of the dune grass paint on it. And it's ready for a top coat if we should decide to use one. One of the beautiful things about Country Chic paint is unlike other chalk-based paints, you don't need an oil wax or polyacrylic top coat in order to make it stable um, and to have it cure completely. The cure time on Country Chic paint is about 30 days. So you you choose to paint and use your item right away, you might notice that it's more likely to chip or get marks in the paint in the, the paint first 30 the days. Out. Yeah, we did. Yeah, they can go look at our Facebook page to see all the different things. You put it on Facebook. I did put it on Facebook. Yes, can you get the rabbit, please, for the dog? Or the Adelaide. All right. Um, and so George is going to keep working on the first coat of paint for this table here. And I'm going to move on to stenciling the top of this table. So one of the things I've decided to do to add some interest to these pieces is I'm going to add a stencil. This is the pattern I've chosen. Oh, you guys can see it. It's kind of glare. There we go. Um, this is the pattern I've chosen for the tops of the tables. It's going to sit right in the center. And these tables have a neat kind of mitered edge around the, uh, around the top of the table and then a solid wood or a solid panel in the middle. So I'm just gonna put my design in that um, inside panel. Yeah, I can I'll try. I'll try to turn it without getting covered in paint or to be over paint. Both would be bad. There, okay, I think that's good. I think you'll be able to do to get in there and paint. There you go. All right. Um, so these stencils are made out of a, adhesive vinyl, the same kind of vinyl that you could use for wall decals or vehicle decals. We have a vinyl cutter so we can do our own designs and cut them out. And that's what this one is. It's a design I made a long, long time ago. So I thought that one might be a nice design for this table. Um, yeah, this one's old, like, like a bunch of years ago, actually. Okay. And so what we've done is the, the design can cut out. I put transfer tape on it that holds all the bits and pieces together as I transfer it from the backing over to the table. So I just put it face down. I'm going to peel the backing, the clear backing paper off. Um, and if you are interested in using one of these sorts of stencils, I do offer them for sale. Yep, and so sometimes we have ready cut ones in our shop, but honestly, the best thing to do is custom order what you want, because then you get it in exactly the size, style, shape, everything that you want for your project. And they can be used to make sign signage, wall art, um, you can use them on fabric, like on t-shirts. Find those really soon. Yes, babe. Yeah. 
going in. Oh, you're old now, yeah. While you're working on that, Robin, I thought I mentioned, um, what was it, like three years ago now when we had our Thorndale 160th event and we had some vendors in the Progress Building that is now gone. <laughs> um, one of the most popular stations for sure that day was you making t-shirts with uh, your stencils and that's probably like a, a nightmare that you don't want to like relive, but. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. that, was, that was super fun. I. Uh, I, I made t-shirts at the um at one of the events in Thorndale. Um, yeah, so I think we had a little... bunch of different um styles and people could choose their style or bring their own and you had the um stencils yeah. and then just use the country chic paint to right over top the stencil and they could walk away with their shirt done and um, I think one of my favorite things about that event was just seeing everybody wearing their brand new um, Thorndale t-shirt and then later at the, the concert. So yeah, it's interesting, uh, the applications for all this kind of stuff. Yes, and we certainly, you know, I one of the things I've done for a number of years now and when we go out to events and even when we're open on the weekend, um we we now do some more we have some more sophisticated things that we can do with clothing so i did mention at the beginning that my that my shirt's done in yeah we can do a lot of things so yes yes um so we now have we we have recently added dye sublimation to our list of things that we can do which, which essentially is a special printer special ink um and then uh, any kind of textile product with a uh, high polyester content will work. And uh, we can put full color designs onto um, those kind of textile things. And people, when people come out on the weekends to shop, um, I think that that's the favorite, that they can pick their design and pick their shirt and put their design on their shirt while they wait. Um, we were, same with, we do masks, we do Christmas ornaments, all kinds of things like that that are super fun to have sort of customized while you wait. We used to have a vinyl cutter out in the shop too. Tie dye. Yes, that was fun. Yeah, we did a George and I did a dip dyeing project not that long ago where we dip dyed some shirts and then picked out some designs and pressed them on. So um, now that I've got my stencil on and I've removed the transfer tape. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a little foam roller here and I'm going to put it, this having twin tables works out nicely. I can use one as a work surface while I work on the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and pour just a little bit of, um, yes, you are. It's not a big deal. All right, pour just a little bit of my paint onto uh, the backing of my stencil here. And then I'm just going to roll over top of the table. What is that? A piece of vinyl. Yeah. For some reason the vinyl had a cut in it. There. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to roll the same. Yes, it will definitely match. Yep. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it like this. I debated doing it dune grass or doing it in a dark. Brown color, yeah. I decided that we go with the dune grass. We're gonna we're gonna use this color. We sell a lot of black, white, and gray paint. Uh, and sometimes when I'm doing a set of pieces, uh, I don't remember. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a set of pieces that don't really have an intended um, owner, I like to be a little bit more brave with the colors. Show what you can do with some of the colors. And sometimes those pieces take a little longer to sell, but they attract the eye of people when we were out at the show, which obviously some of them come time, um, or even just in the shop. They draw attention and, and if they don't sell themselves, then they would um, be their piece that comes so now that I've got that all um, stenciled on there, this is still black off. Oh. 
Do you find, is there an advantage or disadvantage to wait to peel the stencil or is it better just to do it while um, it's still wet? Okay, so I'm just impatient. So I always peel it wet. If you're ever using an acrylic or a latex based paint, um, you always want to peel your stencil while the paint is still wet because the acrylic or the latex will form a seal over the stencil. Um, yeah. Right on latex gloves, right? Um, yeah, so if you're using an acrylic or latex based paint, peel your stencil while it's wet so that the stencil doesn't peel up the paint with it. Country chic, it doesn't matter, peel wet or dry. And obviously you're not going to do a second coat because that stencil's gone now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do a second coat. No, I, I, you know what? I kind of like the look of the wood coming through the paint a little bit there. Yeah. Yes. It does look like that. Yeah. So Georgia was just noticing how this, the top of the table has been built um, like a micro around the edge. Well, it's, it's the grain of the wood. It's not the fine. It's the wood grain. These are actually a laminate. So um, under here, under the wood, they are wood on top and underneath the them. Yeah. Um, so every panel here, legs actually, I think they're solid, but all the bigger panels are wood to be on the top of them. Yeah. We found that it was a bit when we were standing. Um, but really nice, well-built, solid table that I think will be super cute. They're definitely going to be super cute to shop. They're going to add a nice kind of pop color for springtime out there. Um, and the quilt pattern on the back of the pretty uh, nice country, like farmhouse kind of style. This, um, I'm going to move this. Uh, Foam roller, which I love for stenciling. Foam roller and this uh, vacuum stencil off there. So to finish this one off, what we would, what I'm going to do is I am going to use a hemp oil finish. Um, it it ha it has a finish similar to wax, but it's a lot easier to apply because you don't have to do the elbow grease kind of work that you have to do when you wax and brush. It's a lot less rubbing. Um, to get that to make a nice finish. Um, yeah. So, done. Did you give the whole thing one coat? Awesome. All right. So, you're just going to uh, coat on there. Um, like we talked about at the beginning, most pieces are usually a two coat job because paint usually get the coverage with two coats, unless there's some special circumstances. There's a few things that you might want to watch out for. Um, certain wood finishes have tannins in them that can beat up into the paint. So if you have a wood finish that you're noticing that happens with, I'd suggest stopping painting it and either looking for painting it with a solid, um, like you're going to paint over no distressing, then I would go with a stain blocking primer like this one. If you're wanting to distress your, your piece, um, but you don't want those wood tannins coming through, then you want to look for a shellac, and it has to be shellac. It can't be varnish or anything like that. It needs to actually be, um, like, you can mine. have one in here, but I don't see it right now. Um, but you are, you need to make sure that shellac is in uh, the product that you're going to use. Otherwise, um, it's not going to be Right. All right, so um, I'm just going to pour out a little bit of that hemp oil. This is country sheep hemp oil. You could use butcher block finish, you use salad oil, you can use the furniture wax. Country sheep does make a really nice furniture wax. Um, my caution with the hemp oil is I might be more careful if I were um, 
working with a white or very light colored paint is the hemp oil can cause um, a little bit of a, a change in coloration. So I think it's more to use a wax um, for that kind of change. So with the hemp oil, you just brush it on and then wipe it off. Okay, it leaves your piece nice and smooth like a buttery always be last. You don't want to try to put another finish on over top of, um, of, of a coil product. So a waxer, a coil. I know it's always an experience to drop by Lily Lane decor just because there's, you know, animals around, <laughs> different things. So you can go for country chic paint or a stencil, but uh, I think for people that don't often see animals, it's kind of a nice little bonus, eh? It's always an adventure. Huh? <laughs> so I'm going to show you so does anybody have any questions before we finish up? We won't make you watch us do any one step to completion because that does get kind of boring, but um, hopefully I've given you guys a little bit of uh, an idea of um, how to get your project started. If you have any questions, by all means at any time, just send me a message and I'm happy to help. Perfect. All right, well, we're on here. Elaine, do you have a question? Yeah, what hours are you open? We're okay, so the way we we're kind of we hear everything about us here. Um, so we're open Saturday morning, uh, Saturday morning from 10 to noon when there's no lockdown. So, um, we've been closed from uh, the end of December until this again, we'll open back up Saturday 10 to noon, or you can make an appointment anytime, um, to visit us. You just have to just give me a heads up so I know and I'll be here. So you don't make a trip and find that we're not here. Um, and we do contactless pickup uh, for those people that are more comfortable with that. Again, anytime we have to close or shut back the house, um, and we can put your order in that um, for you to pick up as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I have a question. So if, let's say, am I unmuted? No, you're good. Okay, I'm good. Blake was, oh yeah, Blake's here. There was a man here. Oh, here he, he was saying I was muted. Um, so let's say you have a piece of furniture and it has been finished with hemp oil or whatever. Do I, what would, what, how would I prepare that to put the, um, this product? On? Okay, so um, the, all the oil-based finishes uh, deteriorate over time. So all the, the oil products, so wax or hemp oil or um, any of those products, are eventually going to deteriorate to the point where they're not an issue anymore. So if, if it's like, if you got a piece of grandma's furniture and you know she used furniture wax on it at some point, you probably don't have to worry too, too much about that. Um, you can go to the same prep that we did. So a light sanding and apply your paint. If you, so if I decided if I'm going to, I'm doing my hemp oil here now, and then I go, I hate this color. It doesn't match my room. I need to do something about this. Um, probably TSP is what I'm going to use to clean that off um, because I know that that oil is still pretty fresh. Uh, you can use things like the oil or a furniture wax if you want to create an antique finish. So there are so many um, for, uh, finish possibilities that you can do with this. Piece. You can do a nice solid coat of paint. Sorry, these are fresh. It's going everywhere. My quarters run out apparently. Um, uh, so you can do a nice, you know, full coverage paint job, or you can do distressing or an antique look. 
Um, and if you want the paint to chip off or flake off in places, then you can put the oil down first to cause that to happen. Or you can use um, furniture wax, Vaseline, um, any kind of oily product. So hopefully that helps. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Or do any men want to reveal themselves and say, don't paint the wood furniture? <laughs> well, you can, you can relax. Like I said, this, this one is really wood. It is wood. It's, it's yeah. a veneer. This one's not, not an antique piece, that's for sure. Well, we're just waiting to see if anybody has any questions before we're going to say goodbye. And thank you to everybody for watching. and. All that kind of good stuff. So if people wanted to, um, you know, like see what stencils you had, or if they had a, an image or something in their minds, they could contact you to create a graphic or create a stencil and, or you could make a t-shirt for them. Like I know Jackie at Christmas time, she was looking for something, you know, Thorndale. So you could probably help out with a custom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any of those things, just contact. You can send a message anytime, um, or pop out on Saturday mornings um, if you want to chat in person or make an appointment. So any of those methods of getting in touch are awesome. Perfect. All right. Any other questions? <laughs> I have a co-host. Co-host too. Awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it is right now. Okay. Well, um, I know we've got Robin's business on our website, and I'm sure she shared it um, here. And we'll definitely update the Local Skills Academy page on our website to add this video there. If you know of anyone that's looking for tips and tricks and all that kind of stuff, so um, we'll definitely get it up there. Um, I think uh, next week we have the market on King. Did Arden already go over all of this? What's up next week? Yeah. Okay. And then after that's the real estate panel. So I see uh, Teresa and Jen, did you guys have questions or you just want to say hello? My, my internet works better without video some days. As yeah. we're all, I guess, Robin, just one question. So I've got a, a headboard that we picked up from um, a thrift store. I was thinking that I was going to strip it and try and match the stain, but now I'm thinking I might be better off to match a paint to the other piece of furniture that I'm trying to match it to. So that would be doable. Yeah, you. I mean, you, you can do that. We uh, Obviously, we have a little bit li more limited selection in that like some of the paint stores that you might go into can work pull a panatone off of a paint chip. So they use like a scanner to, to get a, um, an exact match. Um, so we can't do that, but you can certainly come and get paint chips from us to match up um, to the, cover, the colors that we have. Um, and the other thing, if you ever wanna do, I'll give you another tip. This one's not, um, not one of my product line, but if you ever wanna do a stain, this line of product, so it's, there, it's Salmon, S-A-M-A-N, um, is a, again, a Canadian product. I love Canadian products. And um, a, a fairly odor-free product for a stain and water-based, so clean up with water. Um, and it's a, a stain and varnish all in one. So you can do a similar idea to what I did on the table where you just sand it down and then you can put the stain over top um, and just paint it on and leave it. Uh, so it's a lot easier than trying to either completely sand the finish off or use chemical strippers. So that's okay. another another option. Just to Thank make you. it easy and confusing. <laughs> it's just in my bedroom. Not too many people are going to see it, so it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Yeah, chemical, chemical strippers will take what ten years off your life. Well, oh my gosh. I, I used to do some of that, and I developed a sensitivity to it. I can't be anywhere near it. It makes me sick. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. not a nice time. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Robin, for coming on to to share your skill and um, share with everybody what what you can offer.
Um, I think this is just another really interesting episode here for our I Love Thorndale crew. Um, kind of exposing people to some new uh, possibilities or give some people some courage to just go for it, right? All right, thank you. Permission to do it. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time and thank you to the girls for co-hosting. for having us. <laughs> All right, if nobody has any other questions or thoughts then we can wrap it up for tonight and we'll see everyone next Wednesday, I guess. Sounds good? Perfect. Thanks, All right. Robin. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for joining us again, everyone. You did great.